due to the recent uh, presidential election, uh, many Muslims in our community are in a state of tension and fear, anxiety, and even panic. Uh, there's um, an increase in, in hate crimes. People are being attacked, people are being harassed. Children are being uh, bullied in school. Uh, as many of you may know, recently a Trump surrogate uh, invoked the internment of Japanese Americans as a precedent uh, for an American Muslim registry. There's a few things I just want to say about this. I want to make five points from a theological perspective. I'm not going to talk about politics. From a theological perspective, five things I want to say. Number one, I want to say that we have to know, not just believe, we have to know that everything is happening according to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is happening according to the qadr, the decree, the preordainment, the divine apportionment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min azaliyah, from pre-eternality. No one can change the, the qadr, no one can alter it, no one uh, can thwart it. We have to know that. I know that I'm standing in MCC right now. I don't believe it. I know it. We have to know everything is going according to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is happening, is happening because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to happen. وَكَانَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ قَدْرًا مَقْدُورًا كُلُّ شَيْءٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى كُلُّ شَيْءٍ Everything, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are no exceptions. And as Muslims, we take solace in that. We take solace in our belief in Qadr because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves the believers. He loves the believers and we're believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins His kitab with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman denotes a universal type of love, the infinitely compassionate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows mercy to the people in the dunya, whether they're Kafir or Muslim. Ar-Rahim, the intimately loving. This is for the believers. So if we don't see the greater wisdom in things, we should be patient. We should be patient. This is why the Prophet used to say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every state. He said, Ajabani amr al-mu'min, inna amrahu kullahu khayrun. Aw kama qala alayhi salatu wassalam. He said, how wondrous is the affair of the believer. Everything that happens to, to the believer is good. When we're in a state of ease, when the believer is in a state of ease, he couples that with shukr, with gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in a conditional statement, which has a lot of emphasis, tawkeed in it, in shakartum la'izidannakum. If you are grateful, indeed I will increase you. And if the Muslim, the mu'min, is in a state of hardship or musibah, a calamity or tribulation, he couples that with sabr, patience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu ma'as sabirin. And Allah says in the Quran, Allah is with the patient. So number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is totally in charge of everything. He's totally in charge. Sometimes in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asks us questions, right? Some, some of them are rhetorical questions. Istifam taqreer. The purpose of a rhetorical question is to remind us, remind us of something in a very powerful way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man yudabbirul amr. Man yudabbirul amr. Who is in total control of the entire affair? Who is in total control? Who has tatbir? Who has total dominance over everything? Who? Me? You? USA? UN? Who? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has total dominance over everything, the entire affair. That's number one. We should know that. That everything is going according to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything is going according to what Allah wants. Wallahu yaf'alu ma yureed. Allah does what He wills. Number two, we need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. When the mujahideen came back from the sahaba from Ghazwat Uhud and they suffered heavy, suffered heavy casualties, during this ghazwa. And even the Prophet وسلم, he sustained uh, injuries to his blessed face وسلم, He had a ruptured lip, a cut tooth, he had uh, lacerations on his cheek, blood was flowing from his blessed face And the Sahaba came back to Medina 
And the munafiqeen, they said to them, إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ They said to the Sahaba, indeed the people are gathering against you. They're conspiring against you. So be afraid of them. Be afraid of them. What was happening in the hearts of the Sahaba? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, فَزَادُهُمْ imana." It only increased their faith, their faith. It only increased their iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ And they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us. He is the best disposer of affairs. The Prophet sallallahu said, قُلِ الْحَقُّ وَالْحَنَّ مُرَّدْ وَلَا تَخَفِّ اللَّهِ لَوْمَ تَلَائِمْ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ Speak the truth even if it's bitter. And don't be afraid of those who find fault with you. Don't be afraid of the reproaches of human beings. They're only human beings. Do what you think is right. Follow the Quran and Sunnah. Follow our Master Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make no apologies. His Sunnah is time tested. It's mujarrab. This is our tradition. He's the best of creation. We should know that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu, if all of humanity gathered together to benefit you with something, they would not be able to benefit you one iota unless Allah determined it for you. And if all of humanity gathered together to harm you with something, they could not harm you one iota. One iota unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determined it against you. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He is the one that in his hand, in his power, is the dominion of everything. Everything. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is point number two. Fear Allah alone. Number three. We have to understand the nature of the dunya. The nature of the dunya is ebb and flow. It's high and low. It's good and bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those are days of varying conditions that we alternate amongst the people. Fitna is part and parcel of the dunya. Fitna in pre-Islamic times meant an oven. An oven was called a fitna. You put a blade in the oven to purify it. It's just the taste. It's just the touch of it. When there's fitna amongst us, we should come out better, purified. But many of us don't have spiritual discipline. So it burns us. And then we, we turn to despair. We become despondent. We start, we start thinking ill of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word dunya itself means a low place. That's what the word literally means, a low place. Some of the ulama even say that hell is a step above the dunya in some respects. Because in hell, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered. In hell, people remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of hell are obsessed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us in the Quran, they cry out, Rabbana abasarna wa sami'na. Rabbana, O oh our Lord, now we have seen, now we have heard. Return us back again so that we might work righteousness. Now we're convinced. Now we're convinced. Ibn Abbas, he said, Remember three things when a musibah afflicts you, when a calamity or disaster afflicts you. Remember three things. That it was in a worldly affair. It does not touch your akhirah. It's in a worldly affair. And he said, this is in and of itself a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A blessing, a rahmah, a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, remember, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. What are we complaining about? Look around the world. Syria, Palestine, Burma, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Whole families taken out. Whole families in one fell swoop. Think about our history, Mongol invasions, Crusades, Spanish Inquisition. It could have been worse. And then he says, number three, it happened in the dunya and not the akhirah. It happened in the dunya. This is a ni'mah, that it happened in the dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that the believers, when a disaster or musibah touches them, they say, Inna lillah, verily we belong to God. This is the best translation, not we are from God. Inna lillah, lam tamlik, the lamb of ownership. Verily, Allah owns us. Allah owns us. We don't own anything. Allah can do whatever He wants with us. Allah created us. 
Verily, we belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah owns us. Inna ilayhi raji'un. And we are to him. We are going towards him, returners. This ism fa'il, an active participle. Allah doesn't use a verb here, which can have a future aspect. We are raji'un right now. We are returning to Allah. The ism fa'il transcends tense. We've been dying since the day we were born. We are in a state of ruju' to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since the time we were created, this, this is something we should know. Then Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ لِرَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمًا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Those are the ones that have the salawat, the blessings and the mercy of Allah upon them. They are the guided ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَلَا تَسْمَعُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا Indeed, indeed, there's so much emphasis in the Arabic here. So much emphasis. Indeed, indeed, you will indeed hear a lot from Ahlul Kitab. Jews and Christians are people who believe in another scripture and from Mushrikeen. This is all of humanity. The Quran does not affirm atheism. If you believe the universe created itself or is pre-eternal in the past, this is shirk. Everyone's a Mushrik or Ahlul Kitab. That you'll indeed hear a lot from Ahlul Kitab and those who in partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then kathira, a lot of white noise. Things that are going to grieve you. Things that are going to uh, disturb you. You're going to be disturbed by what they say. But the solution is what? To have patience, sabr, and taqwa, to guard against evil, to, con to have self-restraint. And that will be the determining factor in all affairs. Your sabr and taqwa will benefit you at the end of the day. This is how we should respond, with sabr and taqwa. Allah tells us in the Quran, there's no surprise. This is the dunya. So much emphasis in this verb, this fi'l in Arabic. Indeed, indeed, we will test you with something of fear. We're going to feel some fear, khawf wal jur, and hunger. And loss of wealth, and loss of persons. And the loss of the fruits of our labor. But give glad tidings to those who are patient. Did you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did you know that there's a hadith that says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests those whom he loves because he loves to hear their supplications? Did you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he buried six of his seven children? The Prophet himself, Habibullah, khayr al khalqillah, the best created entity, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he buried six of his seven children. Some people, one child dies, they never recover. Never recover. This is Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This dunya is a flash in the grand scheme of things. How many years are we going to live? The Prophet sallallahu said, the reaping of my ummah, the reaping of my ummah is bain as wa sab'een. It's between 60 and 70. Most of the people of the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu will pass away between 60 and 70. What is that compared to infinity? It's nothing, it's a flash. Number four, we must continue to strive for justice and continue to engage and serve people. Kuntum khayr ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are the best nation sent forth linnas, li khidmatinnas, in order to serve the people. Our greatness is in our ability to serve humanity, right? And we strive for justice, but we have to know that we may never see it in the dunya. We, may, we, never, see, we may never see justice in the dunya. Where is it written that we're going to actualize perfect justice where is it written that things have to get better for us? The Prophet wasallam said in a hadith, he said, the end of time should come, up, should come upon you and you're planting a seed, finish planting the seed. Think about this, ajib hadith from the Prophet wasallam. Planting a seed, it's the end of time. You're never going to see the tree. That doesn't matter. We have to keep striving. Muslim is an active participle. We have to keep working towards justice. Keep serving humanity. This is our duty as Muslimin. However, we cannot put all of our eggs in one basket. If you put all of your eggs in the basket of the dunya, you will be disappointed. I guarantee you, you're going to be disappointed. We're getting too comfortable a little bit in our dunya. We're going to be shaken. This is the nature of the dunya. That's why we believe in something called Yawm al-Qiyamah. 
the day of rising, Yom al-Hashr, Yom al-Din, al-Qari'ah, al-Waqi'ah, al-Haqqa. There's a day of judgment, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not deal with anyone, even with the slightest bit of injustice. Inna Allah la yadhlimu mithqala dharra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust, the weight of an atom. No one's getting away with everything, with anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ فَلَا يُقْبَلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمْ مِلْءُ الْأَرْضِ ذَهَبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who disbelieve and die as kuffar, the fill of the earth in gold. Listen, the fill of the earth in gold will never be accepted from them as ransom for their souls. The fill of the earth and gold. No, get out of hell free card. No one is getting away with anything. You can't bribe the judge on the Yom Al Qiyamah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ansab, kulu ansab tanqati'u, Yom Al Qiyamah ti khayra nasabi. Every relationship is cut off on the Yom Al Qiyamah, except people who are related to me. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. How do we become related to the Prophet ﷺ? If we're not Ahlul Bayt, how do we become beloved? How do we become related to the Prophet ﷺ? By loving the Prophet ﷺ. By loving his family. By loving those who are beloved to, the, uh, to Allah's Messenger. This is how we become adopted, as it were, into the Ahlul Bayt. Think about Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who came into Medina and the Sahaba were fighting over him. Which group is he from? The, the Muhajirin, they said, he's a Muhajir. He made hijrah. He's from us. The Ansar said, he's from us. He became Muslim in Medina to Munawwara. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say about Salman al-Farisi? Salman the Persian. Salman minna ahl al-bayt. Salman is from us, the people of the house. An honorary member of the Ahli bayt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't want to be cut off on the Yom al-Qiyamah. We want to have strong ties, strong relationship to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, Quran about these, the plight of the believers on the Yom Al-Qiyamah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihati. Indeed, those who believed and worked righteous deeds, sayaj'alu lahum ar-Rahmanu wudda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who believed and worked righteousness, the infinitely compassionate will bestow love upon them. Wudd will bestow love upon them. Allahumma ij'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from them. Number five, the last point. Take solace in the Quran. Read the Quran. We need to read the Quran, understand the Quran. There are, there are various surah in the Quran called the surah of Tasliya, the surah of consolation. These were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during a very uh, difficult time in Mecca to console his heart, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel? Did we just read the surah and oh, it's about some historical event, Abraha, so on and so the elephant. What is Allah saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Alam is a rhetorical question. Istifam taqreer. Didn't you see? He did not see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Was, that was the year he was born. Don't you know the significance? of what your Lord did to the people of the elephant? Don't you understand its significance? Allah is telling the Prophet Wasallam that I was protecting you before you were even born. And I'm going to continue to protect you. So be patient as to the coming of the command of thy Lord. Verily, you are in our fortress. We are protecting you. We've always taken care of you. When the mushrikeen were making fun of him, this one mushrik said about the Prophet ﷺ, he's up top, he's cut off, his sons died, making fun of him because his male children did not survive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, we have already given you kawthar. Kawthar, and the verb is in the past tense, as a sense of guarantee. Why? To console the Prophet ﷺ. What is kawthar? Nahrun fil jannah, a river in paradise. But also Fatima Zahra, and the great lineage that comes from her, alayhi salam. This is kawthar, to console the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi So continue to pray and sacrifice to your Lord. Be principled. You have to continue to work. You can't sit back and, oh, woe is me. We have to continue to work. 
in Nishani Aka, who al The one who despises you. He is cut off. Allah says, Well, duha wa layli ida saja, ma wa da'akara puka wa ma qala, wa la akhira tu khayru la kamina al ula. Allah takes an oath, qasam, by the morning light and the night when it is still. Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he displeased with you. And you should know that the afterlife is better than the present. He's telling the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What comes later is better than the present. Some say Mecca is better than Medina. Some say Al-Akhirah is better than the dunya. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a, a future tense verb. Allah will eventually give you something. And immediately, you will be pleased by it. And the ulama say, this is the shafa'a. But a future tense. And this is going to take some time. You have to be patient. So for your atika. In the future. And then Allah reminds the Prophet وسلم, of, of past blessings in the form of rhetorical questions to console his qalb. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa? Did he not find you an orphan and give you shelter? Wa wajadaka ghalan fahada? And found you searching for the truth and gave you the sharia, gave you the tanzil? And found you cowed down with family responsibilities. And he gave you independence in the form of the Tanzil and Khadijatul Kubra alayhi salam. SubhanAllah. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Alam nashrah laka sadra wa wada'ana anka wizra alladhi anqadha dhahra wa rafa'ana laka dhikra. This is during a time when people were cursing the Muslims in, in Mecca. They were persecuting the Muslims. Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, we have exalted your dhikr. People are saying things about you. These people, they're saying something about you. Your name is written on the arsh. <coughs> on the arsh, kutiba ala al-arsh. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Your name is written on the awraq, the leaves of paradise. Your, your, your name is written on the gates, the abwab of Jannah. Wa rafa'na laka dhikrak. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى With every difficulty there is an ease. With every difficulty there are two eases. This is how we understand these two ayahs. Why does Allah repeat himself here? Imagine somebody who's going through hard times. You say, it's okay, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. It'll be okay, it'll be okay. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ and then again, there's action. Don't sit back and, oh, woe is me. When you're done with your present task, continue to labor hard. Keep going. And turn all of your hope to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of your hope. The Prophet would go out, people make the da'wah, people throw stuff on him, abuse him, insult him. Have you had someone throw something on you? The vast majority of us? No. Anyone insult you in your life? Maybe. But this was a daily ritual with the Prophet ﷺ. They threw something on him. He went home. He lied down on the ground. He folded himself in his mantle. Jibreel ﷺ descends immediately. Ya ayyuhal mudathir. Oh, you who are enveloped in a mantle. Qum. Stand up. Wa anzir. Fa anzir. Stand up and go back and warn the people. No time for rest. This is prophecy. Wa rabbaka fa kabbir. And mad your Lord. Clean your clothes. Get up, dust yourself off, go back. This is what you have to do. And be principal. This is assertive nonviolence. The Prophet ﷺ in Mecca, he practiced assertive nonviolence. Martin Luther King said there's a difference between passive nonviolence and assertive nonviolence. Passive nonviolence is being a doormat. Assertive nonviolence is speaking truth to power, being principal. Following your tradition, but not being violent in any way. No way. The Prophet ﷺ, he did not authorize any, he's not, he has no political power in Mecca. In Medina, he's the Sultan of the city. He has to protect the city. We are living in the Meccan faith. We need to be principled people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet ﷺ, keep your clothes clean and shun their idols. Shun their idols. And that's what got me here in the first place. It doesn't matter. Continue to shun their idols. 
Don't expect anything back from them. No type of increase. No reward for what you're doing. And be patient with your Lord. Take solace in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, O oh my servants, my servants who do what? Pray, fast, what? الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Who have utterly corrupted themselves. لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ La anahia, the prohibitive la. Do not, you shall not. It is forbidden for you to be in a state of despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yaghfuru dhunuba jami'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Inna hu huwal ghafur rahim. Allah is oft forgiving, intimately loving. It is as haram. It is haram to be in a state of bunuq, in a state of despair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy as much as it is haram to drink alcohol or eat pork. As much haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never fail us. Human beings will fail us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger will never fail us. We have hope in Allah. One of my teachers said hopelessness is a bid'ah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a hopeful person because he knew his Lord. Man arafa nafsa arafa rabba. Some say this hadith, there's weakness in it. Sound in its ma'ana. Whoever knows his, his self, whoever knows himself knows his Lord. But anima means to know, arafa means to recognize, recognition. Whoever remembers who he is, he will remember his Lord. Remember who you are. Who were we? We were with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yom alast. Alastu bi rabbikum? Qalu bala shahidna. Yes, we bear witness. This is our origin. And we're going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ is an exemplar for those who have hope in Allah. For those who have hope, Raja, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ You have in the Messenger of Allah وسلم, a beautiful pattern of conduct. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَّكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا For anyone who has hope in Allah and in the last day and remembers Allah, with much dhikr. The Prophet said, where are the two sandals of khawf and raja, of fear and hope? Be between fear and hope, not so much hope that you become, uh, uh, you start leaving good action, right? You become lazy, not so much fear that you fall into a state of despair. But nowadays, because people don't have ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't study theology, it, it tends to be fire and brimstone, doom and gloom, the ulama nowadays say, lean, give some, give some weight on the side of hope. A little more weight on the side of hope. Give people hope. Give people hope. The Prophet told Mu'ad ibn Jabal when he went to Yemen, he said, give people glad tidings. Don't make them afraid. Show them mercy. Don't cause them to run away from you. Imam al-Ghazali one time was robbed by a brigand. We know the story. The man who robbed him stole his books. Imam al-Ghazali said, don't steal my books, that's my knowledge. And the brigand says, what type of knowledge is this that the likes of me can steal it from you? Imam al-Ghazali from then on, he memorized all of his knowledge. And sometime during the course of the conversation, it came out that the brigand was fasting. And Imam al-Ghazali said to him, you're fasting and you're robbing me? And the brigand said, I did not want to shut off or close all the doors of mercy from, to my Lord. I wanted to keep one door of mercy a glimmer of hope alive. I wanted to keep a glimmer of hope alive. And some of the ulama say years later, years later, Imam Ghazali is in Mecca and he's circumambulating the, the Baytullah and he looked, he saw a man clinging to the Kiswa of the Kaaba with tears running down his face and this was the brigand. Maybe he read his notes. He read the books of Imam Ghazali. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, we'll end with this inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided his mercy into mi'ata juz'in. فَأَمْسَكَ عِنْدَهُ تِسْعَةً وَتِسْعِينَ وَأَنْزَلَ فِي الْأَرْضِ جُزْءًا وَاحِدًا فَمِنْ ذَلِكَ الْجُزْءِ يَتَرَاحِمُ خَلَائِقُ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided his mercy into 100 equal parts and he kept 99 reserved for him to show his ibad on the yawm al-qiyamah and then one out of 100 parts he sent down to creation to all of creation. Every time a mother kisses and hugs her child, it is from that portion, one one hundredth, one percent. Every time a father, kiss, a father kisses and hugs his, ch his child, it's from that one percent. 
Every time an animal cares and protects its young, every single time a created entity shows any type of mercy, kindness, or compassion, it is one part out of 100 parts of Allah's mercy. One percent. How much do you love your children? You will willingly give your life to save your child. That's not even near a fraction of one percent of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in reality, the mercy of Allah is infinite. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he said, يَجِيُّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ نَاسُ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِذُنُوبٍ أَمْثَالِ الْجِبَالِ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ هَاللَّهُ لَهُمْ He said that on the day of judgment, Muslims will come with uh, transgressions, the likes of mountains. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. In the hadith of Tirmidhi, Anas ibn Malik relates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Hadith Qudsi, an extra Quranic utterance, a sacred hadith. That Allah says, Ya ibn Adam, O oh, child of Adam, it's, it's not Bani Adam, it's very uh, personal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to each and every one of us. O oh, child of Adam, inna kama ta'awtani wa rajawtani, inna kama ta'awtani wa rajawtani, ghafartu lak wa la ubali. Beautiful hadith. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Allah said, O oh, son of Adam, O oh, child of Adam, O oh, daughter of Adam, as long as you keep calling on me and have hope in me, I will forgive you and I don't mind. And I don't mind. Keep having hope. Keep calling on me. Life is short. It's going to be over. Remember Y2K? I remember like yesterday. I remember kindergarten like yesterday. This is okay. I grew up in this. I was. I grew up in San Ramon in the 1980s. This is where I was raised. I'm not coming from some foreign country and telling you to be patient. I grew up in the in the uh, Iran Contra days, the hostages crisis, and San Ramon very different than today. Very very different. My sister and I, I think, were the only Middle Easterners in the entire school, our elementary school. One or two African Americans, two or three Asians. Everyone else, the overwhelming majority, were white, Christian. You know. So you know. Bullying is, a, is was part of our reality. But the important thing is, the important thing is to understand, to see the wisdom behind certain things. That caused me to ask deeper questions in my life. Why are these people bullying me? Why are they picking on me for something I had no control over? This is how God made me. Who is God? So it sparked in me a transcendental curiosity. That wouldn't have been there. This is when I was seven, eight, nine years old, thinking about these things. So if the wisdom escapes us, be patient. Do the best you can to protect yourself. Life is short. Have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu wa lakum rahim. Tubu ila Allah ya tawabi wa anayim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi Mustafa Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi jma'in One more thing I wanted to mention uh, Former State Representative Mike Honda a Japanese American Born in 1941 uh, He was forced into a concentration camp When he was a child with his parents in Colorado Inshallah this will never happen in America again America is a very different place But the point is that something he remembers quite vividly from his childhood is that people were calling us pagans. He remembers that word, pagans. And more and more we are seeing this, people calling Muslims pagans. The idea that Muslims worship a different God, that we have nothing to do with Judeo-Christianity. It's a very effective method of pseudo-speciation to make us look like less than human, right? So we have to spread the news. In principle, in principle, we worship the same God. It's the God of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is the Allah, this is Allah, this is who we worship. We have different ways of conceptualizing God, different ways of theologizing. So I recommend people, I did a, a lecture, you can find it on zaytuna.edu, you can probably find it on YouTube, Is Allah God? Watch it with your family, inshallah ta'ala, Is Allah God? Or go over the names of God in Arabic and Hebrew, Aramaic and Syriac, um, and de demonstrate how not only is Allah God etymologically, but the concept of God. Uh, the personality of God is consistent with the Judeo-Christian uh, God. Uh, inshallah. So, inshallah, this is something that's becoming a major fitna, um, you know, uh, in our schools especially.
Let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.